Hey guys, this is Classical Kill, and welcome to my series where I take this silver account all the way to diamond. In each episode, we take a core concept and try to apply it incrementally in each game. The core concept of this game is looking over pressuring the enemy team. Okay, so in this game, we're going to be talking all about pressure. This is going to be a review instead of a live game because um, I can't really do a live game and have my camera on as well. Unfortunately, because of the way my setup is, but eventually I'll get there. Now, this game is a really, really bad game for our team because if anyone falls behind, it's going to be super hard considering they have a really strong team comp into us. Like, if they play it properly, we really shouldn't have a chance to win this game at all. But this is lower elo, so we'll see how it goes. They We kind of like run down mid lane and luckily get like people just um someone afk we get an easy kill and then like the vein thinks she can kill me so she ghosts on me but my team is still here and my pike is still here so she has to flash away and now she has no sums so that's actually going to be the opening for us in this game the fact that vein has no sums as soon as um that happens i automatically determine like hey i want to path top to bot lane and we are going to punish the fact that Vayne has no summoners. If she missteps a single time in the lane, I'm going to be there to punish it. Now, this game, I didn't really have too much of a game plan because it's kind of hard to play around and my, my mid lane and my top lane. Because Aesol is just going to outrange all of Annie's stuns and setup. And Kale doesn't really have any setup for me against an Orn. So I figured my best bet anyways would be to go for uh, top to bot. Or maybe a reverse clear down to bot lane so that I can play with my Pike. Pike is going to be the only real person I can play with until Annie really gets her ultimate. Then I can play with Annie. Um, but anyways, we're just going to do our clear down here. We're going to clear our blue gromp and then path down and try to be on time for when I can punish the Annie or punish the vein with no sums. This is kind of a comeback game too. I don't I don't really want to count this as an like an episode because I did lose one game before. I still included it as an episode, but this is more like a comeback game. So that's why I'm considering this more like uh that's why I thought it'd be okay to just do a review of the game already rather than a live game. So we see um they trade down here pretty hard onto the Twitch. They get level 2 advantage. Which is really unfortunate so instead of just like skipping my camps down here and going straight bot lane i uh just opt to do full clear down and see if an opportunity presents itself so i'm just doing my red uh the cane ping me i'm not sure if they have vision of me or not Unless he's just tracking me. If he's tracking me, then that's really good by him. Yeah, he's actually tracking me in the jungle. He knows his timer of uh, full clearing. And he knows that I started top to bot. Because um, uh, Kale showed up uh, late. So he knew that uh, Kale went to leash me on my blue buff. That's actually pretty advanced by this uh, low elo cane here. So props to him. Alphabet soup here. We've, we've talked about jungle uh, tracking on my channel before and why he should be able to know that. It's really smart of him to ping that, but... Again, they're, the bot lane's not going to respect the fact that they don't have sums and I punish them hard for it. I just straight charge Q in, in Vayne's face. And even if she cancels it, it's okay because if she uses her E on me, then Pike can freely set up a kill. Um, and that's exactly what happened there. And I get a nice double. Now, Kane also gets a gank off mid lane and kills the Annie. Sad thing for him, I have a little bit of a tempo lead. Actually, no, we're, we're even. We're, we're exactly even. So he got one gank off. I got one gank off. But I do have uh, two kills. He only got one kill. So I'm going to be clearing faster than him. Despite the fact um, he is a very, very fast clearing jungler. It's just because I'm going to have more AD. So I'm just going to be killing my camps a lot faster on my first back. 
So this is the idea where pressure comes in. It kind of kinds ties in with tempo and speed. The fact that I have like a, an extra kill and I have an assist allows me to have like a lot that long sword that will speed up my clear that much. So see how I already finished clearing my grump and my wolves and heading to my raptors. Let's take a look at where Rakane is right now. So he's just clearing his wolves and he's heading over to his raptors. But I'm already I'm faster than him just by a little bit. But that this actually adds up over time immensely. He's also playing for the kale and the orange. He's like pathing towards the top side, which is not really what he wants to be doing. He has a rel. Like the mistake he made is he has like a perfectly good bot lane to um to to play off of with this rel setup. But instead of matching me and like counter ganking, he's going for the kale, which in hindsight is not the worst thing because shutting down kale early is a really strong strategy. But Orange's not gonna solo carry the game. That's the problem. Like I'm never gonna let that happen. That's why like here he has a good tempo he has good pathing he's got the good pathing efficiency all the like core fundamentals he's even tracking me in my jungle too i'm not sure if he knows that i'm at this point in my jungle i be, i was tracking him at the same point i'm not sure if he was as well i i when i saw him gank mid here i'm like okay this guy's skipping his krugs for this this is not good for him and as soon as he goes for this mid lane gank like he just completely lost all his tempo you see this like He's trying to set something up, but it's okay. That's a little bit good. He's trying to set something up, but it's not guaranteed that he gets the kill here. I mean, it's pretty nice considering Annie has uh, no flash, but this is a massive wave. It's a risky gank to go for. On Kane, really, what you want to do is just like full clear and then like power farm, where you clear all your camps first and then look for a, pr a play. Like, that's kind of what I'm doing because I know I have tempo on the enemy jungler. If you know you have tempo on the enemy jungler, then you can always, like, full clear, power farm, and then make a play, and you'll always be ahead of them. That's why, like, Graves, those types of champions, Graves, um, Kane, who else can clear really fast, Karthus, Fiddlesticks, any of those junglers, if they get a lead on you, a sec, like, one little bit of a lead on you, the game is going to be really hard because... They're going to have a tempo lead and they'll never ever give up their lead because they'll clear their entire jungle every single time before they make a play so that there's just no possible chance of you being able to impact the lane they're pathing to without getting counter ganked. And then you're going to like, you're kind of like forced to take risks and lose your tempo. So with the tempo advantage that I have, I took dragon because like Twitch and Pike were able to just double kill bot lane. Right? I and mean, what did he get from going mid? Like, he got nothing. And he just sat back and did nothing. And, and now, like, I'm just so ahead of him. I know it's, it seems small right now, but the, it's I'm so ahead. Like, the game is just pretty much over. I'm going to do exactly what I was mentioned. And I'm going to just power farm before I make a play. And that's exactly what I do. And I just come over here when Pike is, like, making a good setup for me. And get another two kills on the bot lane. And now I have four kills. And we see Kane top again. I already have level six over him. Right? And he's like trying to make like a weird play top happen. So I just take his, his blue buff. And then I'm going to reset. And then I'm going to clear do the same exact thing over again. And this is how pressure works, guys. As soon as you get a lead over like a, a jungler who needs to clear their camps. Especially like a Kane Hecarim. It's so, so, so like important to just like full clear power farm and then make a play afterwards because you'll always stay ahead of them and then you'll just like carry the game now what i could have done i could have gone for the um the uh his his gromp here it was an option yeah because i was waiting in base so i could get my buy like i lost a bit of tempo there i think the better idea was to just go for his gromp here and then go back um however this still works out like i get my i get my mythic and then I go back onto the map and I'm just going to full clear down like again. I'm <laughs> just going to repeat the same path, keeping all of those concepts in mind. I think, yeah, he tries to take my, my blue buff. And I'm like, okay, you take my blue buff. Um, Orn is kind of like overextended over here for some reason. And me and Kale just kill him. And then he tries to force a play here. Like under tower, like this is really, really risky to do. And I just wait for him to come out of his R, Q, auto, and then uh, Kale gets the kill onto him. And I'm going to use that tempo advantage again. 
tempo, pressure, the same type of thing, same idea. And just take Rift Herald. So I'm going to take a Rift Herald here. Boom. And again, I'm going to clear it down. Now what, he, what Kane could do, like if he's really, really smart, is knowing after I, I just did a clear Rift, there's like a little window for him to come back on the map. Considering he's super fast and he's blue Kane, and he can invade my bot side and make a play on the bot side of the map. If he does that, then I'm forced to go into his top side and take his jungle. But I'm not sure if he's so, like, I, I don't know if he is the idea to really look for that type of play. Considering uh, he's, like, really behind versus me. And he can't do that anymore because uh, Rel kind of, like, died. She's dead now, so he can't make that play. If she tries to invade my bot side, then he's just going to, like, end up getting collapsed on by my bot lane. Now, he could, he could have just, um clear bot and then look for this this uh twitch here off of the roam that uh pike did but instead he actually tries to counter gank the pike roam and he just wastes time it looks he gets the kill onto the the annie but he has to reset now like he's so low he has to reset it's good that he shoved this out he should actually just um like sustain through the jungle and just continue clearing i think that's what he does yeah that's good that's good but he's still behind in tempo like i clear all my camps and you see he's still he made a play then he went back to his camps and i clear i made a play cleared all my camps and now i'm gonna make another play it's really sucks because after he clears his um his top side it's gonna be really hard for him to try to force a play because he's so low hp right so i'm coming here and i'm looking for a lane gank it looks like i got spotted because kane pinged me out he, he pinged me did he see me? Like, wait, what? How did he know I was there? I'm actually really confused. How did he know I was here? Unless he's just tracking me really, really well. Oh, I got spotted on the ward right here. I got spotted, and then Kane pings me. Unfortunately, I would clear, like, the the ward there. Okay, there's... Okay. This is a little thing that I can learn... I can, in, like, improve on now. I could actually just, um avoid this bush at all if i want to go for the lane gank not walk through this path i just walk through the lane like underneath here and i would have avoided this word now in high elo they would know that i would i'm here and they would they would trust the ping that kane just said and they would not even walk up here but instead they just like disrespect the fact i could be in this bush and she walks up into me i combo the rel and then alt onto the the vein and rel dies Really, they should not have died there because they saw me on vision. In high elo, in higher elo, the more higher elo I go, like those mistakes are gonna be, um, like it's gonna be change the game completely because you have to play around vision. You have to. People are gonna respect the fact that you're really strong. Um, they're not just gonna like lollygag, face check a random bush for no reason, especially if I was saw seen on vision. Now, Kane, he tries to make a, a play top lane, which he does, but he goes one for one because remember what again, he had, he made the gank mid lane. He got really low. He cleared his top side and then ganked and he was already low. So Kale was able to trade one for one. Now, my Q actually wasn't going to connect on the, a, the a soul here, but he flashes away anyway, which is a huge, huge plus. And now I have like a lot of pressure bot lane and dragon is spawned. And I'm, this is just a free dragon for us. I'm just gonna fast forward through here. You see Kane back on the, on his bot side of the map. He's look, most likely gonna be clearing Gromp and clearing back up. I'm gonna reset, clear my Gromp, and then clear it down again. So I'm here. Moving on down, moving on down. Also, I probably shouldn't have shown on the map here that I was going to my Gromp because now the the Kane will have an idea of where I'm pathing to because he'll know like, oh, he showed top. So he's not going to be pathing the bot to top. He's going to be pathing bot top to bot. But again, he's not thinking. I don't think he's thinking about that. I mean, he's been doing a really good job of tracking me. Now, this is a mistake I make. I, I think in my head, I'm really strong. I, I want to get more platings, right? I If I can get more platings, it's really, really good gold. It's really, really good gold on you because platings don't count towards your bounty if you didn't know. 
the boffs really recently made a video about like the best ways to make a gold income in the game and platings is one of them and i saw there's five i'm like hey i'll go top lane and fight this orn but orn is five and two and he has jock show and i'm about to give him a fat bounty here which is really bad so i use my r to uh negate the cc there to survive and i get my blast shield to survive a little bit longer and tower is about to hit me here so i have the choice like pike is a little bit late <laughs> so what i should have done is maybe q downward and that would have saved me it was a really really pressure like suspenseful play because i didn't have many options and it's kind of hard to see that in like the split second that I had to make a decision here. I could have just queued down. Pike would have pulled the Ornn and I would have survived. And Pork got a little bit upset. He was like, why did you go back into him? The reason is because like, hey, I wanted to try to escape. I, I didn't really have much of an option. I was either going to get hit by tower or I was going to hit by Ornn. In hindsight, I could have just popped down and then would have been Lufa. Okay. So I die there. It's not good. I lose some of my my pressure my tempo and i give a fat shutdown to orn now orn is has his second item and it's going to be literally impossible for me to kill him i need to get my second or third item probably my third item i can kill him with somebody else with me like 2v1 with my second item but i can't do it without it so now i kind of had to just avoid going for that it was a greedy play like i wanted the plates so i decided to go top side but i because I die, I end up giving some of my pressure away in my tempo. And now, what really happens here is really, really unfortunate. Now, Annie paths like towards mid, and Twitch is also pathing towards mid, which kind of leaves Orn in a free lane. And I can't match this guy, and I have my camps down here, so I'm not going to be going into this lane to hold for them. I think I eventually ping somebody, like someone needs to defend it, or Annie starts moving over. So, Annie can defend it because she has range, which is nice. But she can't stay in that lane for too long because eventually Orn is just going to overpower her. He's two levels on her and he's really strong with Jock Show. Twitch is trying to make a play here, mid lane, with Pike. Oh, uh, so close. So close. They get so low and then they get punished by the, uh, the cane here. I could have skipped my, my bot side camps and then try to come here to stop any plays from happening, like the enemy from doing this. But I come back, I pick up with a kill and the cane, and then Vayne comes back off a of reset, and then she kills me with her ultimate. It's not the worst, though, because Vayne didn't get any, like, shutdown on me. The Orn got my shutdown. If I gave it to Vayne, that would be even worse because then they would have an actual angle to win this game because Vayne is a heavy win con on their team. But that's not what happens. She kills me and then Annie comes mid and kills her. You can kind of see like the game is really chaotic, but it's still in my control because of all the pressure I've asserted early. I got two dragons in the early game. And even though the enemy team is about to take back con some control, because our team comp is really bad, right? Th that's the reason, the main reason why the enemy is able to come back so far into the game. Like, Kale's overextending over here for no reason. So now, I'm not going to have pressure for this dragon at all. And I'm thinking, okay, hey, this game is losable. It because I gave away my shutdown. If I didn't give away my shutdown to the Orn, it's 100% in our favor to win. But because I did that misplay, now the game is winnable for the enemy team. And if, I, if I'm a master's Vi one trick and I'm making those mistakes, like, there's going to be, there's going to be people making those mistakes every single game. Like, people make mistakes all the time that are really stupid and cause you to lose games. Like, here, we kind of have a random fight mid. The main reason why I wanted pressure is was because uh, Dragon and Herald are spawning, but because Kale was not even in the fight at all. Um, and they have a better team comp than us. We just lose the fight. Now they get dragon for free. Kale's dying mid lane again. She has to pop R to survive. She pretty much just has to clear the wave and then reset here. 
She shouldn't really fight to continue fighting the Orn. Like here, she, she's wasting time a bit. She should have just reset. She does have the plants that she can heal up off of. And I'm here coming towards the bot side of the map. And I'm like, okay. Kane just took my raptors. That's cool. I'm going to take my crogs. And maybe I can still play for the top side. And get uh, this rift herald. Or maybe the enemy oversteps the bot side. And then I can get a kill. Nope, no one's here. So I'm just going to path toward, towards top side. I'm pinging on the way. I'm pinging assist me. Kale's gonna go shove up mid top side so that I can get prior. I already have mid prior right now. Twitch and Annie are here trying to assert pressure in the map. I don't really think these guys know the fact that they're asserting pressure for a good reason, reason which is the Rift Herald. Second Rift isn't that high priority of, a, of an object, objective, but we're so far into the game and the two mid towers are still up. So whoever gets the first mid tower actually has some huge advantage. So like a fight kind of breaks out here. But it's 3v2, even though they're really strong, because it's 3v2, they can't like fully commit on an engage against them. Oh, here, I need to go back a bit. So here, I'm thinking about starting Rift Herald, and I see Vayne top lane, I'm looking at mid lane, I'm like, where's the, the best possible play right here? And I, I catch the Vayne, I'm um, clearing the wave, and I'm thinking in my head, hey, she's going to clear that top wave and rotate down to mid, isn't she? Because people don't respect... Like, they don't respect Fog of War a lot of the time. And I can get to this bishop push before her by taking this Blast Plant. So I'm like, hey, she's gonna, if she face checks this, she's dead. And I can get all the pressure I need to get this Rift Tailed. So that's exactly what she does. And she just dies. And I'm going to ult her here because I don't really want to give her a chance to get away. She can very well get away from me because she just popped R and can go invis and she has Ghost. And I, I'm not, I wasn't tracking her Flasher this time. So I just opt to just alt her. It's not a bad trade at all. Like she had a shutdown on her. My my alt is only a 60 second cooldown at this point. So there's no there's no shame in burning my alt there to secure that kill on her. So my my team ends up dying mid lane. They trade one for one, I think. Oh no, Annie leaves mid, goes bot lane, kills the um kills the ASL. And then they win the fight the mid because they have number advantage. And their champions are stronger. But, again, we get the, the Rift Herald. Rel tries to rotate on us. I come back over and secure the kill on her. And then I'm like, hey, this wave, I, I want to push this before I base. Just so I can keep pressure on the map. Again, pressure is everything. So, me staying on the map forces the Orn to, to TP. He can't catch me, though. Oh, no, it's not Orn. It's the uh, Aurelian Soul. I thought it was Orn at first, though. Um, if I had ult, I could have... Maybe stay in the bush and try to like look for a play here, but he like tries to uh, scout the bushes out, which is really smart of him. That's what he should be doing. Um, however, I just reset and come back on the map trying to assert more pressure. So here I'm thinking like, hey, it's really hard for me to get this mid tower. Um, maybe I should just try to play around the top side of the map and see if I can get this top side tower down so we can just start opening up the map a little bit more. The enemy team has broken down our mid tower because of the fight that happened earlier. Like Annie roamed down. Annie's kind of getting caught a little bit here, but she gets to, to walk away. And I drop the rift top side and break this down. And now the enemy is trying to respond to me. The cane tries to like run into me randomly, but he's not respecting my power. Like he, he's not pressing tab. He's not seeing that I'm way ahead of him. And this is all because of that lead that I asserted in the early game where um, I power farmed towards bot side, got two kills, and then I continue to do that. So I, I'll always keep a lead on him. And he's pinging my R like, oh, that's a valuable ability I got from her. But no, bro, like that's really good for me. Uh, my, my ult is on like a 54 second cooldown at this point in the game. And Vayton kind of like walks into me. Um, Kale ult kind of baits him into like a bad fight. And now... We pretty much won the game from this fight. This fight, there's so much pressure because they all die here that we can just win the game. Um, we're going to get mid tower. Kale's going to reset, but she could have actually stayed and continued fighting the ASL. I'm pushing mid lane. Annie should be the one pushing mid lane here, but she decides to just roam bot lane against the Orn. People like to very heavily favor realms over like CS in this elo. I'm not sure why. 
I know that Kane's coming off a reset, so I know I have a little bit of a timer to take this blue buff and then rotate down. And looking down here, Pike gets to shut down onto the Orn, which is really nice. Like, they played the fight really well, 1v2 against, uh, or 2v1 against the, um, the Orn. And they get his shutdown onto the Pike, that's huge. And that all stemmed from the fact of the play from this vein here. The vein dying he over here gave me time to get um, pressure on the Rift Herald. Then I used Rift Herald to get topside. Then we baited them into a bad fight topside. Kane did underestimate my power and I one shot him. Then Kale baited them into a bad fight because she had ultimate. And it all led, it was like a snowball effect. Literally, League of, League of Legends is all about like that snowball effect. And pressure is the concept where if you keep applying pressure in the game, like eventually somewhere is going to break. And if you can find that breaking that breaking point, um, you can like snowball the game like out of control. That's why like playing Assassin Vi I is much more better. I, I, I would recommend it over playing like um, Bruiser Vi because Bruiser is more team oriented. Where Assassin, you can kind of just like push the pressure on the enemy team by yourself by doing the plays that I go for. Like I look for free gold all the time. I'm trying constantly keeping a lead over the enemy jungler. Like if you see here, I'm the main sole catalyst why we win the game. And in order to start carrying your games as Assassin Vi, you need to constantly be the sole catalyst for the pressure, creating pressure on the map to, um, to find these breaking points where the enemy team just kind of falls apart. Now here I have to take a reset, so they end up getting the, um, they end up getting the dragon. My Annie and Pike died, so I don't really have a team to, to contest a dragon with, so I'm like, okay, that's fine. I'm comfortable being really close to the fact that they're right over here because if they do try to chase me, I can escape by just touching bushes and using my Q. I have a really short cooldown with my Q, only three seconds. I can like run over bushes really fast and like just kite the enemy team. It's really, really powerful. That's why I really like the blue smite because it kind of, it turns you into a super hyper carry because you can just like run around really fast, find all these angles against the enemy team of where they're not really expecting you to be. And Vayne's alone here in the side lane. I see their team in the top side. I'm like, okay, this is a free kill. I'm just going to flash on her. Because if I just if I Q and then R, she has a chance to escape, right? And I don't want her to give her a chance to escape. If I R first, or Q to get in range, and then R, then she has a chance to escape. And again, look at the pressure I'm putting. Like, Vayne ends up trying to side lane. You, you should be the, the orange side laning. And then Vayne grouping with her team, but... They're kind of like picking the wrong people to do the wrong jobs in the game. So I can further pressure the game. Like she should be over here so that she can threaten the fact that she can Baron with her team. But that's she's, she's making the, those misplays. And Orn is trying to go for like a Hail Mary play here. Me and Annie are com converging onto the cane here. Annie, like, like I said before, what I need to do to kill the Orn, I said this earlier. I need at least three items or are two items on a teammate or at least three items and now this is a 2v2 situation where can just use all his uh abilities on on my twitch to catch him so the second that kane walks forward i'm gonna use my r to just full combo him and he's dead so he's 1400 hp right now the way i fight i took this fight was i knew like i can use my q anytime i want it's okay i can still combo it because it's such a low cooldown so i'm like okay if i just 2v1 the orn and Kane tries to come in, he's dead. So what Kane should do is literally just walk away because this is a losing fight for him. He has no R, so he can't like he can't play the fight as he normally would. So the second he walks into my range, it doesn't even matter if my R is on my Q is on cooldown. He's gonna get true combo and die. Like look at this Q auto E. He 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 Q's like through me right here, and I think I just Q and kill him. Yeah, he's dead. And me and Annie are finishing up the fight on the Orn. I think uh, my blast shield is coming up, so I'm not too scared. But I move back just in case. The the uh, Ace will actually cleans up on the Annie. And I end up running away. So it turned into 3v2 and then Annie end up dying to the Ornn. So Ornn is really, really strong. He was able to withstand so much damage that um, Ace was able to come back and fight. Like You see, this would never have happened, this pressure right here, if I didn't give my... Um, my shutdown over to the orange, but then he like oversteps and my pike comes back 
and I just I follow up my pike and we kill the Orn. Orn played this really well, but he had some pretty big mistakes. Like he definitely could have carried this game had he just been in different places at different times, different points in the game. Here, if I clear these wolves, I can get some HP back, some resources back, so I can con continue staying on the map. Um, my pike roams down with the kale, and um, picks up a kill, and then we eventually get an ace, and I just shove up mid lane, cr again creating more pressure on the map. Kane comes back on the map with his ulti, and then he gets a double kill here, which is really nice for him, but again, they got the inhib, we're getting mid tower. Right, now I have asserted pressure mid lane. They're gonna come here and try to like um, relieve this pressure taking this wave. So instead of wasting time and staying here, I'm like, I'm going to the next place I can create pressure on the map. I used to have this idea where I would always try to use pressure to get more gold on myself, but I've recently been taught by Dumpa that you don't use the gold that you have in, in order to get more gold. Like, what you do with your gold is you create map pressure where you can, like, clear out waves, you can get into aggressive positions, and then you can create more advantages like that. So here, I reset, I buy a GA. Um, I think, I like kind of like a GA better than, I don't know why I'm AFK here. Oh, what's going on? I don't remember being AFK for so long. Oh, I know why. I was deciding what my last item was going to be. And then I decided, hey, if I get Bork, I can 1v1 the Orin. So I was like, okay, I'll go Blade of the Ring King. It's a very, like, hard situational um, item to go for. I was looking at their team. I'm like, ah, I'm not really scared of anybody. The only thing is, what was in my mind was, the only thing is, Orin is really hard to kill. So if I get Blade of the Ring King, it makes it easier. So that's what I go for. And now I see Orin here. Uh, Kale's typing right here. I think she was like upset about something my teammate said, but it doesn't even matter. If she doesn't come here, I can still kill the Orn by myself because I'm going for that Blade of the Ring King purchase and I'm super strong. So Orn dies and now they can't team fight anymore. Kane kind of walks into my Annie, gets full sh fully one shot. The enemy team is trying to respond with some pressure of, the of their own, but once they get this tower, they can't get anything else because... We're going to be able to respond to this. So I'm walking down to try to test what they're going to do. And I'm like, hey, I already, I can already tell what they're going to do. They're going to get mid, t mid tower and then try to get bot tower. And I'm like, that's fine. Annie can try to contest that. And my Twitch and Pike are coming off of a cooldown of a reset. So if they get this tower, that's cool. We'll trade two towers, get the two kills, and then take Baron. And then we can look to pressure the game somewhere else. They're doing a, a, like an okay job of spotting where they can apply pressure. This is also very important. Before you do Baron, make sure you push out the wave. It's super, super important. Because look, this wave is going to like crash over here. And that's so much more pressure. It's so much more pressure than just doing Baron and then going after. Because now I want to reset. Like I don't want to stay on the map anymore. I want to reset, spend my gold. I think I have my last item purchase. No, I opt to continue pressuring the map. It's okay, though. But again, this is the re main reason why you push it out beforehand. I push out the wave, and now I do Baron and come back to the wave. And now it's already at their tower. So I'm ready to, again, continue pressuring the map. Taking all of his camps away from him, from the cane. Kane is over here. I think Pike gets caught. But it's okay. I smite him to break his shield. And then Q auto E and he's dead. Um, and he gets caught. Kale's still pressuring topside though. I'm me and Twitch are now grouped up together and ready to do this um to do this dragon. If Orn tries to contest us on dragon, then Kale will take their whole base, so she has to reset. He he has to reset with them. They stop Kale and we get the dragon. And you see how the game is kind of all re revolving around the idea of pressure. The only, the reason, even though uh, we were super strong, we weren't able to take the dragon, the, these two dragons that they got earlier, because they had pressure on us. I gave up my pressure dying those couple of times. I died topside, um, giving Orn that shutdown, and I died somewhere else a little bit earlier. So I gave away some pressure, and that allowed them to actually 
um, get these two dragons here. If I didn't do that, I would probably have gotten soul already by by now. I have a really hard time with that too. Like I, I go for like a lot of dumb plays that um, put me in really bad positions in my games. And that's like the biggest mistake I think I have as a player. It's just kind of something that you have to work around because Vi is an all or, all in or nothing champion. So if you misplay like that at all, like you completely give up, you give up so much. I see Kane. I know he has no um, alt, so I just alt onto him. Then we kill the Rel, and I'm going for their backline. I'm not gonna hit the the uh, ace, the uh, Orn that is fighting everyone here. I just go for the the Aesol in the backline, and then I know that my backline is strong enough to kill Orn by themselves, so I do that instead. I see them ready to pressure mid lane, so I'm like, okay. I'm gonna get bring this minion wave um, up with us as we take their base. In hindsight, I probably could have just grouped with them and then ended quickly. But I, I'm the type of jungler who I don't like wasting any time at all. So if this increases our, our odds of winning even by the slightest chance, I'm gonna do it. So I bring in the bot wave, and we just take the entire base, and that's the end of the game. Hopefully, you guys learned something from this. Um, this is classical. This is classical kill out.